Women Innovators. Interviews with women with big messages and big missions, sharing their stories to inspire you to live your passion and step up to make the world a better place. Here's your host, Tammy Patzer. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm excited to introduce you to today's guest, Sue Bauman. Sue has been working with both individuals and small businesses as a tax accountant for more than 30 years. Her experience includes working with everyone from single moms receiving an earned income credit to multimillionaires. She has a master's of science degree in taxation, and over the years, she has been a CPA, real estate agent, life and health insurance agent, and a mortgage loan officer. She specializes in advising small businesses with startup issues. She's passionate about finding cost-effective solutions for real-life problems. Sue is the author of the forthcoming book, How to Save on Taxes Like President Donald Trump, 12 Presidential Tax Saving Ideas for Small Businesses. Welcome, Sue. Thank you, Tammy. It's wonderful to be here. I'm really interested in what you do because it's really important when you're starting out with a small business as a startup, you need to have a good financial tax advisor and a consultant because if you screw up, you could destroy your entire business before you ever get started. So tell me, Sue, who do you help? I help anyone that really has the American dream of just starting and owning their own business. And most people, they don't realize that there's tax implications to whatever form of business you decide to uh, choose. Um, One of the things in terms of helping people, I mean, this country was built on small business and, and the mom and pop businesses out there. And, you know, we are now, but but now we're thinking, everybody tells you to go get a job, a J-O-B, um, and that's the safest way to go. So the small businesses have been lost and taken over by the big corporations, and um, a lot of these small businesses on Main Street, they no longer exist when the big box stores come in. However, the Shark Tank show, that's really that's really brought up a lot of um, excitement in starting small businesses nowadays and keeping the American dream alive. So I try and help anyone who, um, who looks to start up a small business and show them the tricks and traps along the way and how to avoid them. I think that you're really right about the Shark Tank um, craze. It's not only about a craze, but our economy is such now that for example, if you're making, you know, minimum wage, how many minimum wage jobs do you need to make up enough to actually live? It, it's more than one. And even if you're making more than minimum wage, often it's difficult to, you know, pay all the bills, especially if you have a family. So tell me more about the the, the people who are small business owners or entrepreneurs because they do have a different type of way of thinking and their mindset is different. So tell me more about the people and how they think. Well, a, a lot of the one of the first symptoms is they really don't like working for anyone else. And they're popping with ideas and a lot of people will tell them that they're not focused. But I really find that the ultimate entrepreneur has about 20 things they're working on at once. And they are capable of bringing all of these things to fruition. They just need, sometimes they need a little focus here and a little guidance there. But, you know, it, it, it's people who, um, they, they want to start something on the side. or They'll start it on the side. And then they can move it over into something full time as they gradually reduce their time on the job. So, so there's a lot of different people out there who are making this move. The other type of pe- person that's really making this move are um, older people who tend to retire. I'm involved with one company, and the average age is 57. 
And when when people they just get tired of working for the big company after a while, and and the deadlines, and just showing up and listening to people who may not know what they're talking about, and um, owning your own business is something that most people dream about their entire life. So when you're working with someone, um, do you find that obviously when you're an entrepreneur, uh, I find that most entrepreneurs are, are pretty passionate about what they're doing, um, but at the same time, they might fall prey to uh, get-rich-quick schemes or shiny object syndrome. Um, so when you work with people do you and advise them, would you consider it more like a coach that you are, an advisor? H how does that look when you're working I with someone to help them? I can I can function in many roles. I'm I've I've been down these paths and I've coached many clients over the years who've been down these paths. So I've seen what works and what doesn't work. And I we work on an individual basis to answer their questions and, and go through and understand how how do how their idea can be implemented. So many people for instance, one of the things that I find is a lot of people get involved in, um, you talk about schemes and what have you, and a lot of people will think, let's say multi-level marketing is just a scheme. It has its good sides and its bad sides, but you have to know what you're looking for. You just can't, you can't put everything in a box and say all multi-level marketing is bad or all multi-level marketing is good. And like everything else, you have to understand what you're getting into. And you don't want to just jump. So um, yeah, that, would, that would really, so you do have a lot of the shiny object syndrome. And a lot, of, a lot of the entrepreneurs do fall prey to everything that comes along. And one of the biggest problems they have up front is they sink all their money into advertising because they think that everybody wants what they have, but they haven't focused where they're spending their dollars, and they're, they haven't delivered the message properly. And you can even look in any of the newspapers out there, and I don't know how any, any of these people are getting a return on the investment that they're putting out, because they don't even tell you what problems they solve. That's a really good point, because like you said, and advertising, the, the very word ad means paid, <laughs> and <laughs> there are so many ways, especially in the world today, that people don't need to actually throw out a lot of money to get attention, but they do have to have a plan, a consistency, and of course, time and more, most of the time, a new entrepreneur has more time than money. But I, I think that you made a really valid point there. So when you're working with someone, do you, do you like uh, interview them and then brainstorm with them? What might that process look like if you, when you're helping them pinpoint maybe where they're draining their bank account when they don't need to be? Or what should they be spending things on from a tax perspective? Well, um, I don't, I've never really considered it, quote, an interview. I do sit and brainstorm and talk with them, and I spend a lot of time listening because I like to make sure that any solutions that I propose are specific to that person and how it fits their passion, how it fits their products and I look at what kind of relationships they have with people. Um, one, of the, one of the most important things is that people develop personal relationships over the years. And we have to go back and look at those and see how those can be leveraged to, um, to work with their new business. Um, and then you brought up the point about the taxes. If you don't choose the proper form of organization up front, you can end up paying a lot of unnecessary taxes. And um, I have seen cases, I have one client where they have a problem that, I inherited this, and they have a problem that goes back to 1974. I thought that I didn't have enough experience to 
solve it. So I asked several other people, and they all had the same answer. And it's all based on the incorrect form of organization. If they dissolve the company, they'll owe hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes, and they're stuck. So I don't know what's going to happen there. So I like to show people um, how to get set up properly from the get-go. Uh, many, um, For instance, um, many of the attorneys and accountants, they just automatically push the LLC, the limited liability company, and that can cost people a fortune in taxes. So you have to look at the exact nature of your business, and then you, you look at the particular tax situation of the individual, and you see where can they save and where is it going to cost them money. And some of these things can change over time, but you at least want to get people started on the right foot because if they get started off on the wrong foot and they spend all of their money, then they're really stuck. And it's a lot harder to dig them out of the ditch than to get them going straight down the road the first time. That, that makes a lot of sense. So, so in other words, uh, sometimes an attorney or other advisor may not actually be the right person to advise you on the corporate structure or the structure of your business and that's where someone with a tax background can come in because you can look at it and say, okay, here are your options, here's how to save money because nobody wants to pay more taxes than they have to. Just like President-elect Donald Trump, you know, and I'm sure when your book comes out, you'll outline that because he said it. He said, you know, I go by our tax laws and I take advantage of all the tax laws. And, and that's what every American should be doing. They should be setting it up so that they pay the right amount of taxes and nothing more, nothing less. You know, it's supposed to be um, done like that. So that's really typically, interesting. Typically what I find is that if you keep the records and you have the advice, you won't be paying any more than you legally have to. And there's no reason to cheat. If you, if you set things up properly, you'll come out exactly right. That's, that's really good. So your advice can probably save people quite a bit of money. Well, I can also keep them on the, uh, the straight and narrow in terms of uh, even just brainstorming on advertising solutions and just making sure the message is right and, and showing them how to stand out in the crowd a little bit. I started my, um, my tax practice um, years ago, in the middle of a recession, everybody in my department got laid off, and um, it was tax season, so I decided to to uh, start my own business. I had no plans on doing that, and I just I just decided to um, I put together some flyers, and I paid the kid across the street from me to help me deliver them. I paid him in Pittsburgh Pirates baseball cards. He used to come over every day with all of his friends, and um, uh, sort through and look at my baseball card collection from the 1960s, which he was crazy about. And um, so I made sure that all the advertising on there was very, very targeted. And, and one of the things I find is that you have to show people how you're going to ease their pain. And you, you make sure that all the advertising addresses their particular issues. So for instance, they had a local newspaper, and they had a tax um, section in there where all the CPAs would advertise. Every single ad said something to the effect of member of the AICPA, which is member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, um, member of the Maryland Association of CPAs, uh, things like that. They didn't say anything about why you would need to consult an accountant. My ad, I would say, Master of Science in Taxation, in addition to the CPA, but then I would also add in very specific reasons why you would need to come see me. Do you owe back taxes? Do you have rental real estate? Are you buying or selling a house? Are you starting a new business? And what I would find is people would call me. And they would say, well, I saw this in your ad. I have this problem. So to the extent that you can 
point out people's pain and show them how to solve it. I think that's really one of your keys. That's really good advice, Sue, because I, what I really like about you is think about it. You have all this experience in all of these different um, backgrounds. You have the real estate, the health, the insurance, uh, obviously CPA, the, the taxation, the, the focus, but it, that broad background gives you that really solid business foundation and then, of course, what you just said, when you're able to solve people's pains, guess what? They will call you because they have that specific problem. So I think right there, that was gold. That was gold nugget advice. Let's talk a little bit about some of the popular misconceptions about the products and services that you provide what do you find that most people just don't understand and that are their misperceptions about you and your services? Well, I think one of the most interesting um, misperceptions or misconceptions is that um, people, many people want to start a business, but they've been working in a, in a field where they have a lot of expertise, and they may have been working in that field for decades. And they are the top person in their field, and everybody around the country might know them and recognize their name. However, they don't realize they're working for someone else. They are given a specific job to do, whether it's research or find a solution to a very specific problem, but they don't realize that when you own your own business, you have to wear all the hats in the business. So that means you're answering the phone. You're making sure that, you, I mean, you have to drive to the clients to, to the meetings. You have to do the interviews. If you have an employee, then you have to make sure the employee um, performs the jobs that you have assigned them or guess who's doing it. And people don't realize how many hats they actually have to wear. I mean, you're, you're the administrative, you're the payroll clerk. You have to you have to be a computer expert. You have to choose the computer programs. You you're dealing with everything from A to Z in that company. Um, and then the other the other place that's uh, I would say is uh, where where people get tripped up is that most new entrepreneurs will listen to anything anyone who will speak to them with an assumed air of authority. And the new entrepreneur, when they realize they have to wear all the hats, they'll listen to just about anyone. And it could be Uncle John, who's worked for the government for 40 years, and he doesn't know anything about starting a business. And this ends up being a little dangerous because they're listening to people who don't have the background that they really need. And the advice they always get from every family member and friend is, well, I'm just telling you this for your own good. That's not a great idea. Somebody, If this was a good idea, somebody would already invented it. Go back and get a job. I'm only telling you this for your own good. And I've heard that over and over and over. So when I, when I counsel people, I tell them that right up front. And they'll come back to me in the next meeting and they'll say, wow, it was exactly like you told me. And uh, everybody told me I need to not do such and such for my own good. That's what, that is what most people find is because, you, for example, your own mother, you know, she's thinking, you know, protection, protect, you know, what you have. And it's funny that you even say that because my son is 25 years old and he has an hourly job. And he came home the other night, and he I guess somebody had not done their job, and he almost fell like 12 feet because they didn't bolt in some protective scaffolding. And he, Whoa. Um, you know, he was hanging by his fingers, basically. And he says, oh, my God, I, I don't know if I want to keep doing this job. You know, and, and I'm like, I, you know, I said, well, you know, there is another way to earn a living. And... And he's like now starting to really understand that 
he should, you know, yes, he can have his hourly rate job and be guaranteed as long as he goes to work, a paycheck every week, you know, and, and one week's vacation and a bonus at Christmas, you know, because it's, it's not like he gets, a, you know, we live in Florida. It's not like he got a lot of perks. But I said, well, you know, there are other ways and I can point you in some directions and see if that's what you want. And almost immediately, he actually um, came up with an idea that is like a patentable type idea. And he says, I've never seen anybody have any of the, you know, this thing. And I said, well, you know, we can get the research done. And if, if you could patent it, I said, there you go. You could end up with something so that you don't have to do a you know, a job where you get up at five o'clock in the morning, drive for an hour and a half and, and you know, get home at five, which is what he's doing now. Um, and I just thought that was so interesting because I gave him the opposite advice <laughs> for his own good. <laughs> you're, a, so. you're, you're a great mom. I mean, most people, when, when they hear that, oh, it's for your own good, they just, um, they, they tend to lose confidence. And then one of the first things that happens is they, as they, they lose confidence, then they start comparing themselves to everyone else. Yeah. And I have found that I have plenty of experience. I have more than enough degrees and certificates. But I can be in the same room with someone who has slightly different experience. And they may have a skill that I would like to have that I have not taken the time to develop. If, if I started comparing myself to that person, I would just crumble. And so I find that you, you have to make sure that particularly when you're starting up and your self-confidence is a little shaky, that you have to make sure that you don't compare yourself to anyone else. You have to be the best you that you can be. And one, one of the things that I also notice is that, I mean, people, their self-confidence tends to to be a little shaky in terms of, um, let's say they join a group and there's, let's say they're a CPA and there's two other CPAs in there. What they don't realize is that they can find their own niche in the group. They don't have to follow and do what everyone else does. So, for instance, I built my own practice from scratch. Like I said, I was delivering flyers and I found that I didn't have to steal one client from anyone else there were so many people in the area that needed accountants that um, didn't have them. And like I said, I targeted people and showed them where their areas of pain were. So I, I developed an entire client base of people who had never, ever had an accountant before. So there, there's different ways you can go in and focus on, on these things. And you don't have to, and just because it's never been done before doesn't mean it can't be done. Well, that, that is the perfect example of so many business opportunities. And going back to when you mentioned Shark Tank, many of those people, if you look, that they have either uh, a twist on something old or they have something that is new because of the world today. I did want to go back and ask you, I know that you know a lot about multi-level marketing. Can you just talk a little bit more about multi-level marketing and some of the advantages and disadvantages because like you said not every not every multi-level marketing company is the same so as someone who has that specialized knowledge if you were going to evaluate what should people be looking for so uh, uh, one of the things you want to do is you want to um, uh, you want to make sure there's a match with, with the company, okay? Is this something you're passionate about? Okay, you, you need to be passionate about whatever you're doing. If it's something you just don't have passion for, you need to pass, okay? And then you need to, um, something very important is you need to understand the compensation plan. How many, how many people would take a job interview with a nine to five company and not find out how much they were going to get paid before they took the job and started working it. 
I can't count the number of people who sign up for a multi-level marketing company. They've literally been in there for months. And so my first question is often, when they ask me about it, do you want to look at this? I say, what kind of a compensation plan do you have? And they say, I have no idea. And my mouth just drops open. So the other thing you want to do is, I know this is really simple, but make sure if you um, are involved with a company like that, that you know how to find your own website to, so that you can sell a product to a customer or client. I, my running joke is that most people fail in multi-level marketing because they can't even find their own website. And it's, you know, th there's a couple simple tricks, but you, you need to know the very basics. Um, secondly, you need to really evaluate your personal situation. And just because your neighbor went in and made a million dollars in this company doesn't mean you can do the same thing. You have to look and see why your neighbor was able to do that. They may have already been in three other companies and been very successful and have 500 people that are immediately going to sign up onto them. And you may have been working at your desk with your nose buried in a book for 30 years and you don't know a soul. So you really have to evaluate all the pieces carefully there. So those, those are a few um, startup things to look at I, I think all those are really good because um, I've, I've I, let's just say I've attempted a few multi-level companies and I think what I was missing to be honest with you was the passion for that particular product um, because it wasn't what I really um, was focused on um, and I think that's really important too is is um, focus and clarity and it sounds like Sue like like you're somebody like if I was like Sue I need help to figure out should I go this direction or this direction and how do I stay on this side of the law with my taxes I think that you would be someone I could probably talk to and you would you would say okay well let's look at who you are you know is this really a good fit or is it just that your, you know, your cousin said, hey, I want you to get involved with this new adventure with me. Um, and like you said, if you don't even know the compensation plan, how do you know if you can even make a living with it? So that's really interesting. So if people want to work with you. How do you typically work with people? Is it online, on Skype, in person? Um, we can we can work in person. We can work. Um, we we can exchange emails. Um, we can do some online. I'm I'm on a I'm I'm using Zoom lately. Um, we can and talking on the phone is always great. We can exchange messages through Facebook. Whatever works, it will depend on the particular situation. It, okay. Perfect. So how would you like people to get connected with you? I think an easy way would be, um, would be my phone number. And okay. my phone number is 301-747-5120. They can also friend me on Facebook and under Sue Ballman. And so my name is S-U-E. The last name is B as in boy, A-L-L. M A N N. So there's two N's on the last name, and uh, those are two easy ways to find me. Great. So everybody, remember Sue Ballman. She is the author of the forthcoming book, How to Save on Taxes, like President Donald Trump: Twelve Presidential Tax Savings Ideas for Small Businesses. And as you have heard, she is so much more. And she can actually help you set up your business the right way the first time and also offer you that support that small business owners and entrepreneurs really, really need so that you don't get off of your clear, focused path. You know, she can, she can make it so that you don't get stuck in the quicksand, I guess is a good way to put it. So, Sue, there you go. thank you so much. 
Well, thank you. I, I really enjoyed this. Good. This is Tammy Passer. Go make it a beautiful day. You've been listening to Women Innovators with Tammy Patzer. To learn more, please go to womeninnovatorsradio.com. And please do subscribe and share to spread the big messages and big missions to change the world.